have um, the last speaker of the day. And she's getting ready. Yes. So talking about uh, the technologies and uh, artificial intelligence, we need, uh, we, we, we wanted to have um, somebody can tell us a little bit of what, what is this RTG, uh, artificial intelligence? What is machine learning? Uh, we have here about uh, the robots taking over. Um, I don't think that is going to happen, but there are many um, technologies and uh, innovation that is coming. I, I mean, we saw something about Google and um, we will have uh, someone who's going to talk about all these different initiatives under a global initiative. Paula uh, is getting ready. Uh, she's the project coordinator at the UN Environment uh, Program. She's dealing with uh, the projects like Modern Technologies for Disaster Management Environmental Impacts. She has been working in this network uh, from UN that is looking at different um, applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning for the use of prevention, mitigation, response, and recovery. So we will hear from her as soon as the microphone is ready, which is now. Thank you, okay. Paula. Okay. All good? Yeah, thank you very much. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. And good morning for those of you who are joining us from different parts of the world. Whether you're physically with us today or you're joining remotely, it is truly my pleasure to have you with us today. My name is Paula Padrino, as we have been presented, and I work at the United Nations Environment Program. But I'm also here today in my capacity as UNEP representative to the focus group on AI for natural disaster management. I would like to start my address by thanking the organizers. I think that for the past three days, we've had great events. We've engaged in incredible conversations. We've engaged in making meaningful connections. And none of it could have been possible without the hard work of the organizers and the crew backstage. So I think on behalf of everyone, we should thank the organizers. If you join me for a round of applause. Great. Uh, so on my keynote speech today and my address to you all, I wanted to touch upon the topic on the four industrial revolution in disaster management. So how are the new technologies shaping the world of disaster management? I'll click on the next slide. Okay, great. Um, so this is what I, what I plan to do. And um, I should start by saying that disasters are becoming more frequent than ever before. Over the past decades, we have seen that the number of disasters have significantly increased over the past years. Only in 2022, we have seen deadly floods in Pakistan, in Nigeria, heat waves in Europe, landslides happening in Brazil and in Colombia, or droughts happening in places like Somalia. So really, the world is experiencing, as we say at the UNEP, we are experiencing a triple planetary crisis. It is a crisis of climate change. It is a crisis of nature and biodiversity loss. And we are also experiencing a crisis of pollution. So all these three items are really endangering the livelihoods and the survivals of people all around the world. If we want to have a livable future in this planet, we need to take bold actions and we need to start working together. I realize that even in my own organization, sometimes we don't speak to one another. We are working on similar issues, on similar topics, but we are not really working as a collective. And I think these events and the fact that we are organizing this Understanding Risk Conference is of key importance to start these dialogues and to start these partnerships and to start only focusing on our own reports, on our own projects, and rather share experiences, as I said, and, and lessons learned. Now, one more thing that I wanted to 
to say in regards of, of disasters is that we are also experiencing in parallel a rapid change in human society. We are experiencing rapid advancements in science and technology. Some experts define this period as the four industrial revolution. But what does it really mean? What it means is it defines the period where the rapid advancements in technology are blurring the lines between the biological, the physical, and the digital world. In other words, technology is becoming more and more ingrained into our day-to-day -day lives. Like if we just take our phones, we have face recognition or voice activation systems that are completely normal for us now. This technological revolution is also becoming part of the disaster management field. We have artificial intelligence, 3D printing, um, drones that are being developing new opportunities and new applications into the world of disaster management. I wanted to click on the next slide, but uh, I think something uh, didn't work out for my slides, but it's okay. What I wanted to say is that these new technologies are also shaping the world of, of disaster management. I work at the United Nations Environment Program in a branch that is called Disasters and Conflicts. And we respond to every major disaster that happens around the world. And about two years ago, we realized that we were working a little bit in the ice age. We were not really using our new technologies and we were not really implementing the work that we do um, with these new developments. So we decided to start to do some research, go out there, talk to people who are developing new applications, private sector, um, different organizations in the UN system, but also public sector, and try to just map around what is it that it's happening out there and how can we do it in the work that we do in assessing disaster response and disaster risk reduction. So as a result of our research, we found that there is many incredible applications happening around the world. We found that robots are very useful when it comes to search and rescue and disaster response because they can access certain areas which are normally inaccessible for humans or they're too dangerous for us to go. Also, now with the COVID-19 pandemic that hit and struck every single country around the world, robots have been very useful to disinfect certain areas or deliver food or medicines to certain patients in hospitals. Then we also have drones. I mean, we've, you've probably heard on the news and you've seen in your own communities that drones have been incredibly used in recent years in many different applications. In particular, drones have been used to map deforestation, to map drought, um, also for search and rescue, and there's many new solutions in drones being applicable. For instance, in Africa, there's 12 countries which they have established their own flying labs in which students or um, engineers locally produce their own drones, uh, low-cost drones, and they're implementing different projects, amongst which is disaster response, just to give you a few examples. But in our research, what we found is that in reality, the biggest tech trend is artificial intelligence. And it is the main technology leading this revolution. And artificial intelligence is bringing on new possibilities in forecasting and identifying when natural hazards are striking to help us with decision making. The main advantages of, this, of artificial intelligence is that they can analyze large sets of data, different types of data that come from different sources. And they can do this 24 seven. So it is really a very useful technology. A couple of examples that we've seen with artificial intelligence, I can reach to Mexico where they're using artificial intelligence to detect flash floods. So they're gathering data from IoT sensors and from sensors from hydrological stations and weather meteorological stations. And they're analyzing all this data to try to detect these flash floods and try to prevent and notify the community and have these early warning systems in place. A second example is that AI has been used to filter social media information and text and images to try and help first responders onto where is action most needed in the beginning. So, they can prioritize their activities and they can make sure that help is reached 
to wh whoever or wherever it's needed the most right in the beginning. Now, all of these are great applications that I've mentioned. We have AI, we have drones, we have robots, and of course they bring great advantages, but there's also these advantages that are arising with the, these technology developments because everything is evolving so fast, so we don't have the time to put the right standards or rules or there are certain issues that are arising. One of them might be the fact that it, there might be biases in training data sets. There might be privacy issues or legal issues or ethical issues that are arising with the use of artificial intelligence. So we gathered all this type of information in our research and we realized that UNEP on our own, we cannot really solve this problem. We need to talk to other people and say, okay, how do we solve this? So two years ago, we decided to join forces with WMO, which is the World Meteorological Organization, and ITU, which is the International Telecommunications Union, and create this focus group on AI for natural disaster management. So the idea is that we will bring experts together from different fields. It doesn't necessarily need to be expert on AI, but of course experts on AI, but we need engineers, we need people from the disaster management side, we need to bring along the communities who are experiencing those disasters, we need people who are good at communications, and we need people who is able to translate the technical reports or the technical knowledge into a knowledge or a language that everybody would understand. So really everyone is bringing in together. And we are looking into the following. So the focus group is trying to look into how AI algorithms can be used for the prevention and the forecast of natural hazards. And second, we are collecting the best practices and those standardization processes that would help resolve the challenges that we're seeing in data modeling, data collection, and effective communication whenever one of these events happen. So, as I said, we are a big group of experts and we are being divided into 10 topic groups. So we cover tsunamis, earthquakes, landslides, um, plagues, diseases, uh, um, uh, snow avalanches, just to mention a few of the topics that we cover. So we really cover a big uh, spectrum of natural hazards. And these experts are working on these standards and we are developing a roadmap in which we are collecting the already standards that are out there and what are the already pre-established, agreed community um, decisions that have been taken. And then we are identifying the gaps and creating those reports once we know where the gaps are. In addition to this, of course, now we have a good understanding. There's reports being developed. And we, what we are trying to do now is finalize those reports, but also make them accessible to everyone. I personally don't have a background on AI or machine learning, but I work on the disaster management field and I need to understand what, how do I solve the problem of not using an algorithm that might be biased or how do I make sure that the technology that I'm using does not damage the actual population that I'm trying to help. So there's a lot that we're doing in terms of educational materials. So um, trying to translate those into easy, understandable documents or products. And one activity that I'm particularly very passionate about is engaging with the youth. I've heard this morning uh, in one of the talks that we had today that uh, it is very important to engage with the communities and to make sure that it is a cohesive approach. I think that it's also very important that we engage with the youth because first, sometimes the youth is the one who understands more about technology than others. And second, it's because it's the future generations and we should involve them in the conversation. So I've, uh, for instance, part organized on behalf of the focus group, a hackathon. So student competitions where we will bring in their answers and their solutions and bring in their innovative ideas on the problems that we are seeing. So we are engaging them in the conversation, which I think it's, it's very, very important. So the current state of the focus group is that, is like we are seeing what are the problems, we are identifying the gaps, and now we plan to move on into implementation. So trying things out, partnering of course with private sector and trying algorithms and, and move more into a more practical matter and, and, and have a bigger impact into the, the society and the population. So that's a little bit in a nutshell what I wanted to present in terms of technology. And again, what I said before, we need to work together. And 
we might not be able to prevent natural hazards. I mean, they might be inevitable, but what we can do is we can know how to prepare for them. For instance, scientists might not be able to tell us the exact location, time, or magnitude of an earthquake. But what we can do is that we can prepare for that. We can make sure that in earthquake-prone areas, buildings are built with the right engineering cords. So when an earthquake hits, the building will just sway and will not collapse. So these are the type of actions that we should be taking. And it is important that we are taking those actions and including these modern technologies into the, every single work that we're doing, whether you're coming from the civil uh, protection units, whether you're working in the United Nations, whether you're working at the grassroots level or a private sector, we should all be communicating amongst each other. Now, scientists have provided clear evidence that climate and extreme events will increase over, over the next years. And we don't need a crystal ball to tell us that we are, the urgency is here and what's going to happen in the next years. We know we don't need this. What we can do is we can prepare and we can make sure that we define how we respond to these disasters and, and to these events. So with this, I would like to thank you all for participating and for being here uh, at this conference. As I said, I think it's a great opportunity for us to talk and create projects together rather than in silos or in fragmentation. And I encourage you all to join also the focus group. We really welcome everyone. We need every single perspective that we can get. And um, I hope that the next days, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, there's more conversations going on and there's more workshops being organized. So I hope that you have a brilliant end of the conference and as well that you will have a safe return back home, whether you're flying or driving. And um, I hope to see you in the future, whether if it's at more conferences or in actual implementation of projects. And with this, I would like to pass the floor back to our moderator. And I thank you all for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paula. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.